are now live, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! 8.30, we're going to put on our timer. Uh, alarm. Hey, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, where are you guys from? Look at all the hearts. Look at all the excitement. Let me know where you're from. We got. Oh, wow. I missed all these comments. We got Tamar. We got Chaim. We got Suri. We got Kesser HaKavod. We got Alyssa. We got Esther. Esther Kadash. All the way from Montreal. All right. We got, we got Lakewood. We got Queens, Chicago. We got Jersey City. Five Tales in the House. Crown Heights by Mendy Lipsker. We got London Lady. Wow, a lot of Brooklyn, a lot of Queens. Represent. You guys are Baltimore. Hello, Raisy Landau. Wow. Simple Liners calling in. Ladies and gentlemen. Please put your hands together as we call upon. Oh my gosh, why are there so many people calling in? Where's Reb Simcha? Hold on, Reb Simcha, there's way too many people calling in. How do I do this? There we go. Put your hands together as we call upon. One of the most incredible Jewish singers of all time. The one, we did it. The only Simcha Liner. How are you guys doing? All the hearts, all the love. Simcha Liner, how are you? I, I am. So I am doing fine. <laughs> Do you hear me? I hear you well. How are we doing? Baruch Hashem. I want to start by saying thank you, thank you, because I know you had a mega, mega virtual concert today. Do you, do you see me clearly and hear me? Because everyone has issues with my life. Yeah? Perfect. Perfect. So you, you must be very, very tired and exhausted. And you still came on to, to spread love to Kali Israel and beyond. So everyone, thank you. There's the hearts. Thank you, thank you so much on the bottom of my, our hearts. Reb Simcha, how was the concert today, first and foremost? Well, first of all, no one showed up. And that was very disappointing. <laughs> So, um, I'm not really used to, I, actually, you know what? I shouldn't say that. I'm starting to get used to this, but uh, I don't want to get used to this. I want people there. I don't want virtual people. We need right? bodies in the room. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty scary. Like, I'm really getting used to, like, n not, no human beings not in my life, and I'm okay with oh. it. <laughs> yes. Um, no, it's, it's uh, I, I just told my wife that by the time this whole thing is over, which is going to be very, very soon, we'll have mastered the whole virtual uh, concert situation. So, uh, Number you know. one. N number two, uh, before I go back to the virtual concert, everybody, you know how I start this off. I want to give a big shout out to Rebitin Liba. Is it Liba, right? Liba. Because, because of Liba, Reb Simcha is able to do all these concerts. Look at all the hearts. And, she's, and you're able to be here with us tonight. Behind every tzaddik, there's an Aisha Schal. Everybody give it up for Revitin Liba! That's right. So, thank, thank you so 
much, Liba, because it really means a lot to me, because I am getting messages left and right, and it's so beautiful to see how people are saying, Shimi, we're getting to see a different side of singers, not just the singing and not just the dancing, but they have so much to offer, inspiration and wise words. So I want to go back to this concert because you had people from all over the world. That's right. Plugging in. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so um, these concerts have been uh, usually, so the way it is usually I've been doing these for a few weeks now um, at night, 8.30 at night. Um, typically, originally it was because I told, you know, everyone that I'm a father the whole day and the, my, my chance to give, you know, uh, uh, t my time to the rest of the world can only be after my kids go to sleep. But as right. uh, the time clock starts shifting, my kids are going to sleep now, sometimes after me. Um, and uh, <laughs> that is out the window. So you know what, right. today we decided, um, and, and just judging from the hollow that we did, the live hollow that we did, the live Kabbalah Shabbos that we did three times, um, there's a tremendous need and desire for midday kids to gather around the screen, just distract them a little bit from being home, from being, uh, you know, abandoned by their schools. So and that I, was- I'm correct, Reb Simcha, you're the first one that actually like created this virtual concert idea. You were the first one I, that I saw. I think, so. yeah, um, I, it's definitely, there's the wrong way to do it, the right way to do it. And just all in all doing it the right way is, uh, you gotta do it now um, the right way because there's a lot of people doing it and you really wanna grab their attention and keep people engaged and keep people watching the whole time. And um, yeah. Well, they're saying, people are commenting that you're famous for your jump. I don't even know what they're talking about, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, should, we, de should we demonstrate? Should we demonstrate? No, Let's just, go. Uh, <laughs> you don't want to see it. No, no, no. That, you need you're it, famous that, for that. It's sort of like halfway through the second dance type of time. Uh, you can't just pull it out of the hat, you know. But do you pull so. it on the virtual concerts as well? I don't know. I don't even know. It's, 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 you, you have to feel it. It has to be a... It has to be a, a natural, a natural jump. But uh, I think I've posted plenty of them. <laughs> I stopped posting them because it's just. Uh, <laughs> They're like, we get it. You much. have a yeah, jump. Yeah. We get it. But but to that, today was something like completely different. You had lights and and camera and action and it was just you felt like you were in it. It was so amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank God. It was a uh, today was a beautiful, beautiful set. Um, I, there's a, a couple people that are, that are unfortunately out of work right now. So putting people together and using other people's talents and, um, creating this unbelievable venue that we, uh, uh we took an empty warehouse and just turned it into something so cool, so special. And it was a, a cooler production it's than a lot of the live productions that we do. Um, yeah. And, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying. I, I, we thank you. We thank you for your concerts and we thank you for always making us in a mood of babka. What is up with that? That's right. <laughs> what is up with the babka? This... It, no, it's, it's one babka. It's oh, not it's just babka in general. Babka. No, no. If you're asking me about wine, you could just say wine. Yes, in general, I like wine. It's one babka. One it's babka. the babka from Levy's in Hollywood, Florida. Florida. Um, okay. It's a it's a, a an Israeli falafel joint as Israeli as they come, um, and. I developed this incredible relationship, amazing friendship with Ofer Levy, the, 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 the proprietor. And um, just over the years, he, he sells this babka. I don't know. The whole world goes crazy over this babka uh, for good reason. Um, we, so, everyone has got to taste this babka, number one. Everyone's saying they love their food. I never tasted it. Everyone's saying they have the best it's, babka. It's some, sorry about that. People are calling in. People are calling in. What can I say? They're excited. Uh, you're on the shimmy schmooze. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, uh, yeah, no, people were calling in. Uh, they want to get in on the, on the, they, they don't realize it's not like a radio station. They can't just call in and we'll add you to this. <laughs> it's going to get there eventually with the way things are going. Oh, please don't. I don't want it to reach that way. <laughs> no. So people are asking, um, you have, you love this babka, right? You have like, oh, I love this babka so well, much. What? I love what? what this babka represents. What does it it's represent? The babka. It Tell represents us. someone, an Israeli guy in Florida, who you walk into his restaurant. He doesn't even ask you what you want to order. He starts cooking for you. <laughs> sit over here. Sit over here. I'm like, I just need a drink. No, no, no. You don't come in here just going for a drink. Uh, an hour later, you walk out. 
like, stuff, and then you go, okay, so what do I owe you? He said, chutzpah, you ask me what you are? No, 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 it's my restaurant, it's my pleasure, you know, and it's not just me, um, because I'm like, you know, getting, gonna give him Instagram likes. It's right. just, uh, you see random people off the street walk in, he treats them like a, a bra, it's, it's just an amazing experience. So uh, we've that, developed an, an amazing friendship. That's how we Israelis roll. The Israelis roll like that, we're warm, we're kind, like people, you know how we roll. By yeah, the way, yeah. I saw an interview um, that you did full-fledged Hebrew. Are you my Israeli? Secret, my secret or you picked word, up Hebrew along the way? I picked up Ivrit by listening to Israeli radio. Um, really? Yeah, and then just threw myself into uh, the, the Israeli culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I would go every summer to do seven, eight days of concerts straight. And I, I told, me and Baruch Levine used to go together. And I told Baruch, that's it. From the minute we land till the minute we take off, we're talking to each other in, in Hebrew. All Hebrew. We're talking to ev- the drivers in Hebrew. We're talking to everyone. And that was really the way we, uh, we did it. It's, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. We got to get back at, you know. As <laughs> now, Perfect. <Please laughs> You're don't. like. You're going to lose. The, all those numbers, the people watching up there, they're just going to go. You know? <laughs> so we want to know the way you love this babka, this one specific babka in Florida. What is there besides singing that you love so much? The, a hobby out there that you love that we don't know about. A hobby, ooh. Um, By the way, Reb Simcha did not get this questionnaire. I just no, come no. up with it and they're put on the spot, just like that. Okay, you want the you want the canned cheesy answers, or do you want the ones that because my yeah, kids are all playing in the next room, so I, I have to answer. say right. Well, per, my my the greatest hobby in the world is is reflection of 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 joy, right? It's something that's addictive and you live it. You understand it more than anyone else as, as I do. There is, you know, there, there's this concept of like ego, right? When you get on stage, um, some people respond to, they think that everyone is, thinks that they're, uh, you know, la have de la God, uh, like something. It's the opposite if you really experience it properly. It's this unbelievable, like it, it's addictive that um, you, you get up and people instantly forget what they're worrying about, forget what their, you know, the issues are in their life. And that they're magical. entranced by joy. And that is something that once you experience it, it's impossible to, uh, to get there. And that's why this time, um, you know, a lot of people are just sitting home, just doing nothing, which is totally, totally fine. And you're doing a mitzvah by staying home and doing nothing. And you're, you're, you're going to, benefit in the next world from from sitting home and doing nothing you're keeping people alive but at the same time i can't do that i just i'm so addicted to you know that I, i'm sleeping less now than i am usually because um this That's void we'll this void is 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 there of of you know putting stuff out and keeping people engaged and uh that is uh yeah I, i'm sure and, you can relate and that is so you're not just like talking the talk. You're actually, you actually mean what you say. And if anyone knows, if you follow Reb Simcha Liner on Instagram, you know that he put together a beautiful Kabbalah Shabbat, Kabbalah Shabbos before, and which meant that you had to be ready like two hours before Shabbos. That's it. <laughs> All ready to go with your piano and everything. So I have a very um, incredible question for you. Since this whole Corona quarantine thing, quarantining happened. A lot of people um, have reached out to me. People that haven't before, they started following me, I guess through the lives they've connected through me to sure. me. And all over the world, and many of them aren't aff- affiliated. They're not religious and they never kept Shabbat before. Now watching these Kabbalah Shabbat that we never put it out there on, on Instagram, why would we? We didn't have the need to do that. They're like, you know what? I want to reconnect to my roots again. And watching these videos and these songs, they're somehow connecting to, to me. And like, I can't explain it. Like you sure. said, when you dance, it's a lot. I can't explain it. And you've done that, Rev Simcha, just through your videos alone, but especially the Kabbalah Shabbat video um, that you posted. So I want to ask you, people who reach out to me and who are following tonight, that they told me, if there's, um, a, a, you appreciate Shabbat because you went out there, you went out of your way to give to Kalal Yisrael to bring in the Shabbos in a way where like, we're not rushing. Just take it. Shabbos is here. Like no matter what happened this week, we're going to take it in like the way we should. 
Do you have any advice to them? Somebody who's starting to keep Shabbos or been keeping Shabbos their whole life? Sure. How would you make yeah. it like? Yeah, no, there's definitely, I mean, I think now we have this, this interesting like opportunity. Um, I, I don't know about you, but I find myself scrolling on my phone endlessly nowadays. Like, and I could be on my phone for 20 minutes and not remember a single thing that I saw. <laughs> it's like it's the weirdest thing and I, I i know that everyone's going through the same thing um to add folks no but it's like now i don't know what i'm expecting to read like it's over everyone could just leave their house obviously you know it, it, it's not going to go that way but like we have a three-day on coming up and a lot of people are nervous about it and i'm nervous about it you know usually we have the structure the shul you know all that but and i guess there's something like three days like Shabbos just yesterday like after Shabbos like when I flipped on my phone I, I got that you know that anxiety again that I've been feeling all week and like there's something just so like peaceful we don't know what's going to happen over three days you just and I would tell this to anyone that you know no matter where they are in their curve journey their Yiddish guy journey like try Shabbos a few hours just knowing that there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can know. There's nothing from this point on. It's just the world, is, the world will go on. We go on, right? Everyone wants me to think we go on. But uh, it's, uh, we go on. It's just, you know. Just I, I, I love that yeah. thought. That's a great thought to think about as we're going through the Shabbat, especially for some, the first time. On a completely different subject. So you posted a video um, of Yitzi Spinner, like saying how, my heart aches for all the singers out there and all the musicians and the producers. We don't have a job out there. So if anyone knows of any jobs that, you know, you can hook us up with, help a brother out. And as he's saying that, he's standing in the front of his house and you see Reb Simcha Liner coming and dropping off packages. So. Working for Amazon our, now. Mm -hmm. You work for Amazon. So we want to know what, what would be like your ideal job if you weren't a singer? I know that you have a, a, a what is it, business? What do yeah, you have a degree? I have a, I have a master's in finance. Um, right, but you wouldn't want to do that. Uh, no, so, <laughs> I, <laughs> uh, one second, one second, I'm in my office, one second here. So, I, I even, this is the only thing that, I spent $180,000 on a degree and this is all I got, my, my, <laughs> my university flag. Um, you know, I was at a wedding once, I posted this, uh, this on Instagram a couple of years ago. And there's a picture of a guy holding his ears like this right in front of me as I'm singing. And right after um, the chuppah, this guy goes over to me and says, you know, you should go get a degree. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him I actually have one and it's sitting somewhere under a box, somewhere in my studio. You can go, uh, you know, maybe we can dig it out. But I, I started out um, when I had just gotten married um, working for the company called Aflac, which was a major uh, insurance company in like the DC, Washington DC area. And about three days in, I decided that I will never, ever, ever work in finance again. Um, wow. So what would be your ideal job? Like, let's say singing didn't work out for you. Um, so let's see. Um, I always wanted to be a doctor. Really? So that would be. A, I'd, I'd go back to med that? I'd go back to school. I'd go back to I school. Knew that. <laughs> what do you mean? I play. I play a doctor in like six of my music videos. You think it was by accident? You know? <laughs> <laughs> we could use you as a doctor right about now on the front line. That's true. Unfortunately, yes. Someone yes. wants to know if you ever canceled a wedding. Um, I canceled. Well, now I'm I'm being canceled. But uh, have I been the reason for not showing up to a wedding one time? Um, almost 10 years ago, oh, it I had, be good. I, I had the flu, <laughs> not, not much. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The but, are actually on here. They're like, interesting, yeah. <laughs> interesting story. Um, a few years after that, I, uh, woke up one morning with like no voice. And when I say no voice, I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't say a word. That's so scary. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's, thank God it's rare, but it happens. It happens like in the winter time, it's, you're sleeping by the heat, you know, or something. I don't know. And I had a wedding that night in Montreal and I'm getting nervous. I'm already texting other singers like, you want a gig in Montreal? This is like a, the easiest uh, pick me up. Um, and I don't remember who it was, but someone told me, he was like, you get on that plane 
you do what you got to do. You go, you never know what the end, you have to do your Ishtadlis. The day changes as it goes on and the day is going on at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock. I'm by customs in, in Montreal before they had those cool kiosks. And the guy's like, what are you here for? I'm like, I <laughs> <laughs> can't say a word. He's like, I'm about he's like, to say right, whatever. Wedding. He's like, I'm like, I'm typing in my phone, my, I'm at a wedding, you know? <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I get to the wedding, barely anything. Um, comes time for the chuppah. I basically like hummed the whole chuppah, like, <laughs> which is like, like the most mortifying thing I've ever done. Like, the chuppah come really over to me after. They're like, it was so angelic. It was so beautiful. We've never heard anything like this in our life. I'm like, okay, you know? And then the, the sister got married a, a few months later in LA. And my voice was like, my voice was flawless. And I get up there and do this whole big hook. And they're like, what happened to the angelic voice? <laughs> what was that? Yeah. I have a yeah. question because you said you did, you did that in Montreal, right? So I, I had two events, and I was working back to back to back. I was so tired. I didn't know where I was. I was going from event to event. I get off the plane, and I'm like, because I, I did an event in Toronto, and then I, I had another one in Montreal. And it was an early Sunday morning. I'm like, how you all doing, Toronto? And I hear, like, <laughs> one nebuch clap. Like, what did you just say? And I'm like, I don't People... know where am I. They're like, you have yeah. more time. So did you ever do that? Did you ever, like Mordechai Spiro uh, enlightened us with his stories. Did you ever mess up with the crowd, the name of the Kala? Uh, so, okay, we definitely had the wrong Chassan Kala. That's like, anyone that's been doing this as long as myself has had that. It's usually, it's never the singer's fault. I'm just going to put this out there. It's, it's never, never the singer's fault. fault. Five minutes before the Chassan Kala come out, the band leader or whoever hired you is supposed to hand you a paper. On that paper, it's supposed to say the name of the Chassan Kala. Yes, I got the paper, but the paper was last night's Hassan and Kala. That's not my no! fault. That's the name, the band leader's fault. I had nothing to do with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so but, always um, blame it on the band, the band players. Yes, always blame it. Note to self. The, okay. In terms of like knowing the crowd, you know, like we just did, anyone that was watching today, I talked about it a little bit during the concert. That, um, we had this Kalakavo tour we did. The Kalakavo tour is, is amazing, um, guys. How many of you? Thank you. We had, and loved it. yes, we had um, over 20,000 people came to see the Kalkavo tour live. This is a, this was the live concert um, tour that went to 21 cities around the world. Um, we did Amazing. Johannesburg, we did Israel, we did Canada, America, whatever, Mexico City. Um, and I just remember there's one city that I'm not going to mention the name, Denver, that we went um, and in this <laughs> said city, Denver, Anytime the music got too loud in the city, Denver, the people would just <laughs> not handle it. And I, at one point I said, guys, I know it's after 8.30, but lighten up a little bit. That's, you know. Really? And, yeah, it took, it took, it was just, till people like, you know what it is? Denver never had a real concert, ever. And till about an hour, an hour and 10, an hour and 15 minutes into the concert, they, they couldn't relate to it. And then when they understood it, it was just like mind blowing to them. Just so much the lights and screens and, and a band. It was just so much going on, you know? <laughs> so I, was, I also, I just did it. Someone, someone just said, sounds like Edison. This was nothing. <laughs> this was nothing like Edison. Edison was unbelievable. It could be because half the crowd was from Lakewood, but, but <laughs> either way, Edison was an amazing, amazing show. That was one of the last shows on the tour, but it was a. Speaking was about a, Lakewood. Uh -oh. Or hashtag not Lakewood. Not Lakewood. Everybody knows that you live in Tom's River. It's very clear. <laughs> you make it clear like every other day on your page. So this is my question. For us Brooklyners, I'm from Brooklyn, yeah? Mm -hmm. Every day someone moves out to Tom's River and they're like, shimmy, right. you don't know what you're missing. You can get a huge house. You can get grass. You can get a driveway. What are you doing? Come see the light. And I'm like, <laughs> but... But Brooklyn, so my question to Rev Simcha is, what's your pitch? Like, if you wanted to really get someone to move out there, like, what, what, what's your go-to? Right. So I'm a little bit of what they call uh, biased here because I own, no, I'm joking. But about <laughs> six years ago, um, my wife and I were 
renting, uh, I think we were renting a house in Lakewood temporarily, trying to figure out where to move. We were going to move to Florida or Muncie or so, you know, somewhere. I, I grew up in Muncie, so I need space. You know what I'm saying? Uh, no, no offense to Brooklyn. I, I understand. No I get it. Guys. I get Losers. it. But <laughs> I get it. But it's just, it, you know, I needed to find that place. So we would drive. There was a, there's a mall. Those of you who live in Lakewood, Palm Shore, Jackson, Howell, whatever. There's a mall, Ocean County Mall. It's like the saddest mall in the world. It's <laughs> like no, no stores are open there or anything. So we would go there to go for a run because it was always empty. And in the wintertime, you can actually run in there. There's no one in there. It was a lot That's of fun. Crazy. So driving to this Ocean County Mall, you drive through Tom's River. And I would tell my wife, leave out the day there's a minion in this neighborhood, we're moving. We're there. We're and there. For, Count me in. For, for like two years, there was never a minion. And finally, a neighbor of mine lives next door. He's a great, great musician. His name is Yossi Greenspike. Um, he's like, some club you want to make a minion and move there? So we got together a minion and started what's now known as Tom's River. And you started like Tom's forward, River? Uh, by not, I, I was not the active one that started it, but we moved but together as a minion and started tenant. the community. Right. So that's why I'm so sentimental to Tom's you River. Heard it here fo first. <laughs> the OG. Wow. <laughs> you and Yassi. <laughs> that's right. So that's why, you know, Tom's River is very near and dear to my heart. And it's an incredibly beautiful, beautiful place. But it's now what, like it started off with the first 10. Now it's like everybody's so over a thousand River. families or something. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. So you still didn't tell me the pitch, but okay, cool. You, you want to, oh, to move to, why do you want to move to Tom's River? Why, why would you move why to Tom's River? Okay. First Once of all, First of all, you have an unbelievable property. Every house comes with your own, like, Gan Eden. It's amazing, right? And you're probably appreciating it now more than ever. It's not a joke. I tell my wife that we have, you know, Hakar Satayv to Hashem every single day, that we're not living on top of each other. You know, the, what you get here for the price of what you get in Brooklyn is just, it's, it's almost a highway robbery. No offense. But it's a... <laughs> but I, Look, also I, like I can't open my window and make a clumsitz with my whole block, but... Oh, our heart yeah. goes, goes out to you. But it seems <laughs> like all, all the singers are moving out there. You got Nachat. That's what it seems. Right? We have uh, Nachat. Let's see. Nachat. I think Shelly Waldner just moved out here. Um, Shulam Lemmer or no? Shulam Lemmer lives here. Yeah, yeah. Shulam lives here. We have the, like half of the Yedidim Choir lives here. That's um, crazy. It's really, so really that's nice. why everyone just move out there. All the illegal people are out there. That's what's up. Oh, what's really, really nice is that there are called it's built around cul de sac. So all the blocks have I'm I'm gonna go real full on pitch right now. <laughs> it's <laughs> they're cul de sac. So like Shabbos afternoon, everyone has like a place that you could, you know, not feel like you're on top of each other, but at the same time, all the kids are out in the street. Um, it's beautiful. There's quiet there's no cars driving down the streets it turns into you know just a beautiful beautiful area it's a super non-judgmental neighborhood people work very hard people care for each other i mean that now in particular during this whole coronavirus thing there's people dropping off each other's groceries there's people you know t picking up people's prescriptions it's like it's non-stop it's an amazing look it's an amazing community but uh i, I really oh, just oh, oh we question. have to we have to give a shout out to someone that just joined uh, talk Sa to us. Sa Sari, Sari Wiggs just joined. Can we oh, talk about Sari Wiggs? Sari Wiggs, ladies and gentlemen, a.k.a. Reb Simcha Liner's sister. That's Nobody right. knows that. Uh, someone someone exposed this to the world just, just recently. But um, I have an amazing uh, I, family. I actually there did. she is. Sa okay. Her name is not actually Sari, but guys, Sari no. Wiggs. How many of you knew that? Comment below. You'll see nobody knew that. It's, it's unbelievable. So much talent and kindness and good people in your fan jam. Although it's I don't know awesome. who's manning. I don't know who's logged into the Sari account right now. It's either my sister-in-law, <laughs> my other sister, so my sister. <laughs> no, Sari is not her name, but Sari stands for, is an acronym for the name of her kid. Actually. All her kids, right? See? That's right. Well, she has more since then. But they didn't want to call it Sari Upstudy. So it's only... Uh, <laughs> A lot of people want to know, they're commenting, it, when you had that uh, situation with your voice or lack yes. thereof, 
do you um, do the raw egg situation or that's like a, ho a hoax? As far as I know, raw eggs will end you, will, you will end up in the emergency room. It's uh, Really? So you never tried that? Definitely. No, and I never plan on. It's, it's uh, like a guaranteed way to get salmonella. <laughs> so uh, don't anything, do it. Is there, anything, is there anything that we could do to, if we, if we lose our voice, is there like a secret tip or you're just, it's very, very little. Over. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, a little bit of Motrin, uh, sleep, water. I mean, sleep. So there's not much more that you can do. I can't believe it. These shimmy schmoozes go, look at this. It's already nine o'clock. Like I have less than 30 minutes left and I, there's so much to talk about. What is your favorite yeah. song of all time? Because I'm Ooh, about geez. to let you know what is a, a lot of our favorite songs. So go ahead. My favorite song of all time. I change it so often. But not, um, not, not for No, recently. Course. My recently. No, I would never have any of my songs be my favorite. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sick of them. Right? It's like, okay, guys, we're going to sing Ribono again. Yay. You know? Um, Seven years although, later. Although I'm very, very Ribono. grateful. I'm very grateful for that song. So let's not, uh, and not in any way am I coming across that it's, uh, that, you know. Um, I love, love, love Cesar Avoda. Cesar Avoda is that song from Yishai Rebo that is like super complex, super, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily say to listen to it if you're in like a down mood, you know what I'm saying? Or want right. to dance, but it's a, uh, oh, it's brilliant. It's so well, brilliant. Well, most of the songs are like very deep and, and like They're very deep, yeah. intense. Did, were you one of the many hashtag all the singers that covered his, um, what is it? What's it called? Oh, uh, Halev Shalit. Halev Shalit? That. Yeah. Halev Shalit, yeah. Yeah, Halev Shalit. <laughs> so I, I, I absolutely was considering it, and then I saw that everyone else was doing it. So I let, so did you, fall you know, into, I'll, into I'll give some good ideas to other people. It's fine. <laughs> no, I mean, I'll, I'll sing it live occasionally, but uh, um, I, had a, I, I had prepared, actually, to do an English version with uh, one of my neighbors really? here. Yeah, and then we, uh, we shelved that it. That would be so. awesome. Yeah, you know, there's a time and place about, for everything. Speaking about English version, okay. My favorite song, and, and I'm speaking on behalf of a lot, mucho, mucho people, from every song on this, the latest CD is amazing and everyone loves it. But Call It Kavod is like ah. on a whole different yeah. level, right? I, I, unfortunately, it's like one step too musically deep for a lot of people, which is not a bad thing. Um, but when I heard that However, song, I was just like, I was walking through the streets, I was doing a, a concert in London and I got the track, um, you know, like the way it works is I'm in my studio here. When I, we come up with the song, I sit down by a piano and I'll just uh, record a demo, what they, you know, they call it a demo. It's just basic piano and my vocals and I send it off to an arranger and he takes away the piano and he just uses my vocals and creates a track around it. And this guy, Tamir so cool. Sor, who is like the guy that, created a track for Mahapecha Shal Simcha, Tel Aviv, you know, all these huge songs. He's the one that arranged the song. And um, he sent me this track. He's like in a bunker. I went to visit him like in Rishon Lezion, like four stories underground. Not a single ounce of sunlight, not a ray of sunlight comes into that place. He's probably as white as a ghost if you ever saw him out outside. <laughs> um, I wa I'm walking through the streets of London and I'm just like, bawling i'm bawling i was like this song is so amazing it's, it's so amazing it's like yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's powerful it's so amazing it's so deep it has such a crazy message and yeah. then i was trying to look for lyrics today and i couldn't find it anywhere one jirix.com okay, so so and and it's, and, and it's on my website and it's on my website and is the translation as well uh, possibly, I don't know, but uh, it, it's, so We're I talk about this again on, on the Color Cover tour, um, we, I discussed the story behind the song and I'm happy to share it with you. We only have 25 minutes, so I'll make it brief. Okay. The Color Cover, yeah, Color Cover is one of those, <laughs> thank you so much for listening. <laughs> Color Cover is one of those. Story. Thank you sure. so much. Yeah, I know, right? It's very, it was very moving. It was like a, uh, Color Cover is one of those, um, like, concepts, phrases, it's a terminology that like you can't translate. It's impossible to translate. Think about that. Like what would you, how, what would you translate? Congratulations? No. 
thank you. No, it, it means so many different things. At the same time, it means one thing and we can't really. So the story is that I was doing a Siyam HaShas um, in, in Flatbush for a Sparta community that was finishing all of Shishis Yisrael Mishnah on one day. They were wow. studying grandparents with children. Um, the whole community, like all the different age groups were paired up with the, with the opposite age. It was unbelievable. And I was given a portion as well. And I was with um, Isaac Hittery. I don't know if you know who he is, who was one of the arrangers of the event. And like at a certain point uh, during the event, and this was like all day, I'm about to get up to sing. And I'm like, this is just so amazing. This was so moving. And especially in the Sparta community, you know, it's a very different world than the Ashkenazi community. There's like this uh, tremendous respect for the, the Rabbanim and the, the elders of the community. But the elders of the community didn't have the opportunities to study Torah in the Sarada community necessarily that the Ashkenaz community had. Like in the Ashkenaz community, you know, even in Europe, everyone was learning something, you know, the Lakewood Yeshiva, the this Yeshiva. Um, so this was a, a, a very moving, you know, experience for a lot of the elders that are learning with their grandchildren. They never in their life thought they'd, they'd be studying with their grandchildren. Wow. So yeah. I, I, I just jotted down these lyrics on a, pa- on a piece of paper, like, and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. I'll save, this is like a, a, you know, a moment of inspiration. That was, I slid that was the paper. Brilliant. Yeah, I slid the paper off to uh, Isaac Hittery, who's like very well known for, I think he did the, the lyrics for Ribono. Um, he's like a python. He has beautiful, uh, you know, uh, he can write beautifully. Um, and I said, I don't know when this is going to happen, but hold on to this and, and get back to me. A couple of days later, he sends me this beautiful, beautiful, completed lyrics, along with like a like something <laughs> you know, different than the style that we were going for. Totally fine. Right. But um, I sent, I was going to LA. I'm about to take off. I forwarded this voice note and the lyrics to Yitzi Waldner, world-renowned art, um, writer, composer, wrote half of every song you've ever heard under a chuppah. Half of every dance song. Amazing. Um, he, Go Yitzhi Waldner. Yeah. As we're taking off, the network drops out, you know, at a certain uh, height. Um, and the, only the lyrics were sent and not the voice note because the voice note is a much bigger file. I land okay. to a text from Yitzhi saying, Simcha, these lyrics were just unreal. I wrote what I think is my, you know, the most incredible song I've ever written. And then about 15 minutes later, he's like, but well, why are you sending me now this weird voice note of the same lyrics to a tune that makes no sense compared to what you what apparently wanted? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, and it was just like, I, I say in the show, it's like the moment where like, you have to like take a step back and realize that like, it was like a message to me from God that like, there's like a nice nistar every day. You're always looking around. You see, uh, you know, just miracle, hidden miracles. This is one of those moments that like God was like, it's okay. I'll take the wheel. I'll, you know, you don't have to micromanage everything. And it was like, uh, for me in the beginning of producing an album, it was a tremendous like chizuk and uh, it, it was uh, a, a very, you know, fundamentally moving experience for me. Wow. I love the background of that story. It all started yeah. with, I think that's even more incredible because it started with the elders and the grandchildren and how apropos it is for now for our corona time where yeah. we can't be with our elders. Like, that's True. such a powerful message. And I, I guys, I just want to tell you the lyrics to this, just the chorus for a second. We are believers. We are the chosen nation. Like, like Reb Simcha said, you can't Translate, it's just a feeling. And I think that's what we are right now in our situation. Like, although you're completely blurry and I don't see you, but I know that if you're there, like that's the Corona. We're all, it's all blurry, but we know that there's, there's a message there for us. And like Hashem is there. And like, we have each other to get us through it more than ever. I, and the music video was like even more profound. Like, you're like, I have places to go, people to see, things to do, places <laughs> to get to. And the Kaddish Baruch was like, nope, I need you to stop. 
and I need you to do this, and I need you to do that. And I feel like this is what's happening now. Like, we're all like, we have to shop for Pesach, go to Pesach programs, we have concerts. 100%. And... So I, I want to ask you if you could, like, inspire people out here. I know, like, it's a really, really hard time for people. What are you gaining from this? Like, any message, a personal message that you're get, gaining from this whole experience that is so beyond our understanding? Right. Um... So a couple of things. First of all, people are begging me to sing. I sing all day today, and there's plenty of amazing videos for you to go check out as soon as this is done. Please. From today, I'll, I'll, I'll fresh, yes. fresh stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I'll, 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 I'll say this. I'm a singer. I'm not a chacham. I'm not a rabbi. I'm not one to give muster. I'm not one to give, in, you know, hadracha. I'm not one to give directions on life. People are saying my screen is blurry. Yeah. Is it still blurry? It is. I don't know. Maybe... I have, Instagram is just so annoying. Hey guys, do you still see me? Yeah. I see you. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So the most important thing is that you have to hear me. You don't have to see me. So I'm going to be the last person that would ever tell people what to do. I'm going to be the last person to ever be the one that people turn to for direction. I'm not qualified. Um, you know, but that being said, I'm witnessing how people are going through this and I'm being reached out to hundreds of times a day to interact with people and, you know, FaceTime, Zoom, WhatsApp, email messages, text messages, whatever it is. And the one thing I'll tell you is that we're all doing the same thing at the same time for the greater good, to help other people, which is just such like... When else in history, besides like Yitzhak Mitzrayim or standing by Har Sinai, did the entire nation participate in the same mitzvah at the same time uh, around the world? No matter the, it doesn't even matter the time zone. You know, it's Shabbos is over. There's almost, there's like a few minutes where it's Shabbos um, in, in the entire world, you know, because Shabbos is a little bit more than an hour, technically, uh, more than 24 hours. This is a mitzvah. Not only that, but by staying home, you're, you're, you're doing a mitzvah by helping other people. This is that one like, opportunity in life, probably, that we're all doing the exact same mitzvah at the same time for so long. And, you know, my, my hopes and goals here are that uh, just the joy of doing that will hopefully get us through this quickly, as painless I'm as mean. possible. And, uh, you know, hopefully at the end, there's a special prize, as they say. You know, when we're talking oh, about there children. is, there is, and it's better than pizza, folks. Oh yeah, oh, I, that's how I wanted to ask also um, <laughs> about Esty, that the, about pizza. Um, Esty's online, another uh, blogger that I had last night with her and her husband. So they're starting. They want to have like a positive, like looking forward to something after this whole Corona thing is over, which yeah. is going to be over really, real soon. Yeah. Uh, wait, hold on. I'm ADD for one second. Leave that thought. I just want to go back because you said, yeah, welcome to my mind. Um, <laughs> you said, I'm not a rabbi. I'm not like this person who can tell you this and that. That's exactly my, my goal. That You don't have to be a rabbi. And you don't have to be someone so up there to connect and to impact so many lives. And, no, 100%. And, and that's so beautiful because you're, so, you're a role model to so many people. And like we can never underestimate the koach that we have on this, you know, world and on this platform specifically. Anyway, so they're starting this initiative um, after Corona's over. What is the first thing that you're doing? Ooh, it's that's a, a great question. question. I know. Yeah. Um, by saying whatever you said. Was oh, very, you know what? Powerful. I know exactly. I know exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> My parents have been dying to hold my daughter. I'm just going to throw that out there. And I know, and, and it's not, you know, we, 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 we're doing this, you know, social distancing where like on Arab Shabbos, we'll drive past their house. Oh, someone says a haircut. Get, yes. married to, <laughs> get married to a hair and makeup artist. All these problems don't exist. You know what I'm saying? All the, okay. Oh, back awesome. to what I was saying. Back to what I was saying. Every Arab Shabbos, we drive by the house and my daughter runs towards my father, runs towards my mother. And my parents, you know, take that, instinctive step back right now or something like that. And that, I want that to end. I need that to end. Because wow. it's almost like a metaphor for 
like we have these instincts that we're, we're dying to embrace each other. We're dying to, you know, dying to is not the best uh, term, but we're, we're, we're itching to, we're, to uh, you know, that, that's, what I, that's what I think is uh, ultimately what I, what I wow. really, really... It's the little things that we never would think about that, like, we're, we're appreciating and looking forward to. A lot of people are saying, I can't wait to give people high fives. Yeah. Um, so, like, like we said, you're a role model to so many, not only as a singer, but now, now they're getting to see, like, the real Reb Simcha liner, you know? Like, Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> it's dangerous, folks. Listen at your own risk. So who, did you have a a role model, not only in singing, but like in life, growing up, to aspire to, to be like them? Um, Midos and Talent Leo is the two separate people. Let us know. So (laughs) to be very honest, I don't remember much. (laughs) <laughs> my child. That's a good thing. It's, I'm, I'm telling you, it's a very good thing. <clears throat> Bali Ayanhara, I had a very uneventful childhood. Bali Ayanhara, in, in the Hashem. best, best yeah. way possible. My sister who's watching will probably disagree with everything I'm saying. <laughs> but she will agree with me that my grandmother, um, who I shared a birthday with, so like from the day I was born, we had the second Hebrew day school with Hebrew birthday. Um, we had a super special bond. Uh, my daughter's named after her. She was, a, you know, a, a survivor, a, a warrior, like unbelievable person. We could write a book about her. She and everyone in my family will agree was that person. You know, my grandfather has had a history. Also, like he was on the front page of the newspapers, you know, New York State versus Morris Liner, who was fighting to make it illegal for people to fire someone because they keep Shabbos. Like, just a tremendous, like, th- they were a power couple, but in the, the, the way that you would never expect, you know what I'm saying? They were completely behind the radar. As opposed to, you know, yeah. yeah. Ah, there we go. Uh, Sorry, would agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's All right. amazing. You know, I learned one thing from my grandmother that um, everyone should be using from this day on. Um, anytime someone would start talking about someone else or start complaining about something or saying Lush and Har or anything, she would say, nice vetted outside. And from there, Say it again. What did she say? I didn't hear. Nice, nice vetted outside. Oh, nice you know vetted outside. Nice vetted outside. And instantly, the conversation would, uh, the conversation would, uh, would, would change. So guys, yeah. if you hear any Lush and or negative Stop thoughts, the spread. Stop the spread. It's nice weather outside. It could be raining. It could be snowing. It don't matter. It's That's always right. nice vetted. Um, I really did a horrible accent. I should be fired. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Bobby. Um, wait, so speaking about family, okay, and, and what runs in your family. Um, so you, there was a question answer, I think, that you did on your Instagram, which people okay. love. Because you're yeah. giving them the time of day. You're sitting there. Also, because you have nothing better to do these days. <laughs> yeah. Although but, that was done on the day that I had a wedding um, with like nine people plus me outside. And I was answering a lot of the questions during the <laughs> You, wait, <laughs> so you, the you did a wedding with nine people and you were the 10th. Plus me. I was the 10th in the minion. Yeah. How, can I explain, uh, ask you how that experience was? And do you think like, you know, Maybe we could implement this into our Jewish uh, lifestyle. Oh, please don't. <laughs> okay, just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it uh, it was it was you know I I'll be very honest. It was very moving and everything, but it was very sad. It was very sad because of what it's it represented. Sweet. You know, it's, it's uh, sweet. Yeah, you know, I I was working with this class in college for so many months. You know, it's not one. There were a couple of these weddings that we had to you know get through and and. Because it was in that sort of in between time between like when things were in complete lockdown and just suggestions, maybe you should stay home, maybe, you know, so they were in touch with like the local health authorities and they're like, yes, get 10, 12 people together. And it was a, but um, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was, people always like giving these whole stories that was so moving and this and that. It was sad. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a part of it that, yeah, yeah. Um, so wait, there's, they're saying the Simcha Initiative. Do you have an initiative or they're talking about the It's Nice Weather Outside initiative? Oh, I have no idea. It could be. Let's do <laughs> it. Let's make it a thing. Hashtag nice. Simcha initiative. Nice ve- hashtag Nice Weather with a V. No, no, no. E-V-E-R. We cannot call it the Simcha initiative. We have to give credit where credit is due. Hashtag no, I said hashtag. 
Okay, hashtag Bobby's initiative. Don't oh, call Bobby. it Bobby. She would have gotten very offended. I was just going to say <laughs> that. When, when I do My events, Oma. <laughs> when I do events and I'm like, give it up for Bobby Friedman. She's like, it's Bobby Shimi. There, you there go. goes your tip. I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so, so one of the question answers, someone asked you, when was your first performance? And Reb Simcha Liner said your, that your oh. mohel told you that you cried in a beautiful B flat. Yeah. So is this something that you're born with? Like you woke up, you were born and you're like, I could sing, I got this. Like, does it run in your family or, or were they like, oh my gosh, where did he come from? Okay, for the record, that story was absolutely made up. Uh, but <laughs> the, uh, the, it definitely, it's, there's definitely a genetic element to it. My, my family is very wow. musical. Absolutely. My family is very musical and um, it's like a responsibility, sort of. You know what I'm saying? Why no chazanas? What does that mean? The last song of my last album. Go check it out. Available on Spotify or wherever quality Jewish music is streamed for free. We don't make any money off of it anyway, so just, I don't know, take it from your friends. I don't care. But, uh... <laughs> Reb Silcha, you did um, a, a tour, literally, like, in, from Yehoppetsville to Yehoppetsville and everywhere in between. Is there a place that you didn't have a concert somewhere and where would it be that one but like, you're like oh, that we really? didn't do yeah oh um so i, I i'll tell you the, the highlight of the tour was johannesburg it was a concert in johannesburg really? it was look at all the hearts johannesburg, that's, the johannesburg was like next level and when i finished um they told me you think this is great you got to go to cape town <laughs> i'm like oh okay let's uh you know get on Bring another 18 on. hour an 18 hour flight of a yeah, so I'm looking forward. I would love, and we actually had plans. We have plans to do a show in, in Cape Town in December. Who knows what's going to happen, but uh, yeah. Who knows, you know, which is, which is something I wanted to ask you, Reb Simcha. Who knows? Like, the Mitzrayim didn't know what was the next Maka. Like, seriously, yeah. who knows what's going to be the next thing? We thought this Maka was bad. Oh, we, Hashem has got in store for us. So if you were living back in the day, which maca would you like be like? This is I, taking I, a really weird turn. Okay, yes. I know. <laughs> this is the shimmy schmooze. This is not your yeah. typical interview. It's like hindsight in 2020. You get it? You get it? Hindsight in tw this is hindsight in 2020, right? Exactly. Yeah. I see what you did there. Which maca would, what, what's the, the end of the question? <laughs> This is getting interesting. You're like, I lost you, Shimmy, like seven hours ago. <laughs> um, which maca would you say, you know what? I'm cool without this maca. Even though they're all without? really bad. Yeah. So you're saying which one would I think is the worst? Basically. I think Shrin, right? Come on. I think that was the, the only was one that actually has... Shrin, Shrin is boils, right? Or, or, or maladies. Like a, 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 it's like a dermatologist's dream. The, <laughs> I mean, think about it. It's the only maca, as far as I know, that was started from inside out, right? Kinem, even though it affected your body, was was an was, that was a, an inside out. An, an no, outer. I didn't know that. What? Which one? Shin? Yeah. I, didn't I mean, know it, was, it was. It was. It came from your body. It 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 appeared. Your immune system was gone, right? It's something like, you know. Wow. Okay, so that was very interesting. It's funny how people ask the funniest questions. I'm telling you, I'm like, send me the questions. Yeah. Okay, I have, I have one more thing because we have, the countdown has begun, five more minutes. You want, you want to save it? Yes, I know. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to save the live room, and okay. I'm going to send everybody the link. Yes. Okay. The last question. Um, even though we, we touched upon this, in the, like, sort of, um, I don't know why, but this week has been very difficult like Shabbos was over we turned on our phones I personally know of a, like a couple of people that passed away just from after Shabbos my daughter is having a zoom now with her great because they lost their rub the rabbi rabbi Blum and just it's it's a very tough week and we 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 would think like it's it's getting better but like we're it's very difficult not only for adults but for kids and Reb Simcha your name is happiness that's what it stands for and that's what you emulate and that's what you try to give off through your entertainment and through your your platform whatever platform it is is there anything that you could say right now to everyone watching 
in the last three minutes that we have, how can we keep the simcha going when we feel like there is nothing to be sameach about? Wow. Um, that's deep. That's a, this, this interview just went like... I, I could go from, you know. like, which uh, manga would you not have to... <laughs> um, okay, let me, uh, let me think about that. So what I was saying before about the same, you know, everyone doing the same thing together, it's, I, I think that when this is over, and it will be over really soon, you know, please God, I think we're going to have an amazing appreciation for the simple things in life that, you know, we probably didn't have as much until we were forced to understand, you know, sort of even things like um, repercussions of our, of our actions, like things that what a chain reaction is, you know, that you do something, it directly affects someone else and for the good as well. I think that after this is done, you know, which again, I say again, is, is going to be soon. We're going to appreciate just being together, being out, being, and how could you not look forward to that? I'm, I'm so excited to just bust that door open, jump on stage, get into that wedding hall, see people rejoicing with each other for, for life simchas. And it's just like, you know, I, 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 love I, that. I just can't look, wait. I can't wait to be there. Looking, looking yeah. forward to what we maybe not have appreciated as much as we should have, you know, till now. I love that, guys. So yeah. keep looking forward. Hold your head up high. And I give you a bracha because we're down to the last minute. I give you a bracha, Reb Simcha, that you and your Revitz and Liba should, she's a makeup artist. She not only enhance people's we're in the same beauty. business. <laughs> yeah, right? It's a Simcha business. You yeah. guys should always be part of Simcha Smachot. And, and you should never have to take, you should always be on the giving end. Enhancing people's mm -hmm. simchas through their makeup, through their feeling, through their rejoicing, through connecting to the music, and bringing a, a joy that no one could ever explain in words like kol Yes. And my bracha to you and to us, it's really to us, is that your kol tour should end, and you're going to have one big, huge kol HaKavod in Yerushalayim. Amen. Yes, yes. Bring Everybody it on. Everybody together, and you're going to be on top of the world. You're going to be so happy. Amen. Amen. We'll all be there. We'll all be there. Thank you for taking a time out to spread simcha, love, information, and answer really random and awkward questions. No, anytime. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have simcha liner, everybody. Thank you, Shimmy. All the best. Laila Tov. Good night. Be the reason someone smiles. Bye, guys.